Mix 94.7, it's Sean Mack, Deck the Hall Ball 2022 with Ryan Tedder from One Republic. How are you, sir? Uh, excellent. Thank excellent. You. Good. Uh, welcome back to Austin. You guys were just here like a couple of months ago. We were. This is the most, uh, the shortest gap between Austin visits in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and when you were here, it was August, I believe. You were I think here. you're right. Yeah, it was like August. 110 degrees that day. It was, I don't, I still don't understand um, the routing uh, decisions that uh, Live Nation and all of our bookers make for, for summer tours. It's like, let's do Houston on August 5th. Let's do Austin August 10th. It's like, it's crazy. There high. might be a cool breeze. No, there's never, no. There's never a cool no, breeze. No, there's not. No. And actually, weirdly enough, it's also warm here when you're back. So thank you for bringing the it temperature is. Yeah, back. Yeah, we came from Boston where it was snowing last yeah. night and freezing. So it's kind of nice. All right. Well, uh, speaking of warm weather, uh, LA guy, how do you get into the holiday spirit when it's like 80 degrees and sunny every day? Well, is there like a technique to that? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, part of it is, you know, I travel so much that, that we end up, we always end up uh, every, pretty much every year, we, we see all the seasons every year. So True. we get autumn in New England and, you know, uh, Christmas, like yesterday in Boston, it snowed all day and I saw the Nutcracker at the Opera House and like it was a very Christmassy day. Um, L.A., it, it, this is going to sound funny, but like, well, no, Austin doesn't get terribly cold, but like, um, it got down to the forties last night and the high today was like 54, which oh, is like wow. in LA running for the Arctic. hills. People. Arctic, yeah. Everyone's wearing North face <laughs> and like, right, goose they're, jackets. They're, like Montclair just empties out. Everybody's just wearing down goose jackets. Um, it gets cold ish. Um, but what's cool about LA is from my house, it's 45 minutes to the mountains to, uh, like, uh, Mount Baldy, which is near, um, uh, Rancho Cucamonga. Anyway, it's yeah. 45 minutes yep. out and, and they have like, I think four feet of snow right now. Crazy. So yeah. like I'll go up with my kids and have a snowball fight and it's 45 minutes from our house. And it's then crazy. You're back home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're Colorado originally, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I've lived all over. I'm a re I was born in Oklahoma, uh, but like first generation, I'm not like from like, you know, uh, hundreds of years of Oklahoma. Mm, right. Uh, the, I lived in Nashville. I lived in New York. Um, I, I lived in Colorado. Yeah, so I lived in Colorado for, we started the band in Colorado. Yes. And which I went was to high school one. there yep. um, and lived there for years. And we did a lot of our albums we did in Denver. Yeah. 20 years ago, right, was when the band started. Uh, 16. 16 years ago as of this January. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys, do you remember like those first uh, rehearsals, the first performance you guys ever had? Is oh it like God. etched in your brain? Absolutely. Or? Yeah. No, I remember all of it. Terrified? Um, it, it was, t I was terrified. I was not a good front man when we started. I, I was like... <laughs> I spent my 10,000 hours on songwriting, not on performing. Right. And um, what's funny is because I was, I was um, an actor in high school and college and I did tons of musical theater, did television commercials. That didn't transcribe to leading a band uh, and on a stage. So right. You think it would, at least a little you bit. You think it would, but yeah. like I didn't have that innate... Um, cockiness or je ne sais quoi, whatever it is that mm. you... That, that kind of thing, yes. the, the energy that li lead men give off. Um. I always kind of thought there's like a, there's a, a certain level. I mean, it's just to be quite honest, there's a certain level of, of whether it's real or fabricated bravado, you know, and, and narcissism that you have to achieve. Yes. The, the be, Mick Jagger, you got to be the Mick to Jagger. To be a good front man. Right. Like yeah. you have to you buy your own, yeah. you got to buy your own thing yeah. and you got to build it and then believe it and then, and then uh, turn it on, turn it off. And, um, so it took me a while to get to that, but the first rehearsals um, and the first gigs, we played uh, our roommate. She was a booking agent, a talent agent in L.A. We mm -hmm. played her 30th birthday on Melrose Okay. And um, for like 50 people, and I was so broke. Um, <laughs> I went to Guitar Center. We didn't have the gear to do the show. I put all the gear on my credit card. And uh, we did the show, and then the next morning I returned everything. Yeah, don't spill anything on this. I returned thing. everything, and... Um, and then they asked us, the manager asked us to do more shows at that place. And then we started, we played everywhere on the sunsets. I mean, artists don't have to do that anymore now. They just get like lucky on TikTok. Right, and, and exactly. They're like a quick viral I'm a moment. celebrity, <laughs> like put, book my show. Like, <laughs> right. We played every single, for four years, we went up and down the Sunset Strip playing the Viper Room a dozen times, the Roxy, you, every venue in California you can imagine, um, until people started showing up. Right. You know. Well, they're definitely showing up tonight, for sure. I uh, hope so. Hey, uh, congratulations, of course. One of the biggest songs of the year. I ain't worried. Uh, I want to talk about just kind of that song in general and the timeline of how that comes about. I've always wondered about these, like, movie soundtrack songs. Does, yeah. it, does it start with, like, 
actually you just kind of take me through it does like does it start with the movie does it start with you guys making a song do there are they like this is the scene we wanted in like what's the kind of like order of um, operations on something like that occasionally if you have like a long-standing relationship with a a screenplay writer or 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 a director or producer for that matter they might bring you in super early on in the process of a film if music is integral to the movie right like um you know i did i'll give you an example i didn't end up doing music for this film but this was a prime example um four years ago lego 2 was in its infancy and mm -hmm. they brought me in initially to look at all the storyboards right and they had to animate around the songs and so yeah. we were kind of dating to see if that was going to make sense in the end i ended up not doing it but so sometimes that'll happen like mm -hmm. they'll just say you you're doing the music anything animated that's yeah. that's gonna, anything that's a musical that's the way it works for something like top gun where it's not animated it's not a musical but music is critical um they bring you in at the end when they're in post-production you watch the scene they still had some unfinished graphics and then i did this mm -hmm. i also did the song for um uh well, i'm completely spacing on it now um uh the film that joe jonas is in uh that's about the korean war and i'm completely oh spacing yeah yeah on yeah the, on the title of the film right now uh, so i'm having a, yeah. a, a freudian a brain <laughs> part. but um the, the, uh, you know with that with top gun two two movies kind of back to back i got brought in watched the scene um had a zoom with tom cruise and and, and jerry bruckheimer and and just talked about the scene for like yeah. 30 minutes and what this what does the scene need to feel like you know. And you'd have you'd seen the original, I'm sure, and like the of course and the volleyball yeah. scene, of course, is like you yeah, know, we're epic. We're replacing the volleyball scene, right. you know, playing with the boys. Um, Kenny Loggins crushed that movie. That was a big shoot yeah. still. Um, and uh, so, to, to the best of my abilities, the next day we just Brent and I in the band um, wrote the song mm -hmm. and um, recorded it real quick. It's 24 hours later. Sent it in. I texted it to Tom and just said, "Hey, this is my first swing the first run yeah i'll give you i'll give you two or three more ideas i like to get i do lots of songs for film and tv and video games and i usually submit three or four ideas knowing that um even if you nail it on the first try directors producers they like to say no they need part of their job is saying no mm -hmm. and so you give them something to say no to right and so i was going to submit more and he just called me and said you don't need to write another thing this is this is the song yeah. And it was crazy. And then we went and saw the movie in the IMAX, just me and my wife, and blew our faces it's off. It's amazing. Yeah. It's incredible. I've seen it seven times. Yeah. It's yeah. So we saw, yeah. We, have you seen it in one of those 4DX theaters where it's like, you know, no, it's that. Yeah. It's where the chairs move. No, man. Flying. We don't even have those in <laughs> we LA. Have one you in have Austin. Them in Texas? Yes. God, we need to step it up. Make man. a note. I think it's actually coming back to theaters. So. LA needs, yeah, it did. December, it came back like whatever, five days ago. Yeah, yeah it just there came back. Go. Yeah. 4DX. 4DX. All right. I, we, I'm, sure we, I'm sure we have one in LA. We have to. You got right? to. It's LA. Got, got to. to have that. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. We appreciate it. Always for great sure. to have you back in Austin. Yeah, Ryan Tedder, One Republic. We love them. Stick the Hall Ball 2022. Thanks, guys.